thing. The problem with that movie, and the problem with all movies, is short-term attention span, impatience, the idea that people won't read books today. It's a struggle for all of our children and all of our grandchildren to get them to read books because they don't have the patience. They don't have the zitzflash. They, they don't have the, dip, the, the ability to concentrate and to sit down and to actually go to something because they have been trained to the short-term attention span. Yiddishkeit has exactly the opposite horizon. We are not concerned with what happened before the last commercial. We are concerned with what happened 4,000 years ago. We are concerned with what happened when the Beit HaMikdash was standing. We are concerned with continuity, and, and it's as vivid. Uh, Steve was talking about Yosef before. Yosef and Yaakov and Yitzchak and Abraham, even Noah and, and Moshe Rabbein, these are real living presences to us. We have a long-term horizon, and we are to be concerned not just with, you know, there's that old saying, they say a politician is concerned about the next election. A statesman is concerned about the next generation. Right? First of all, a TV politician is not even concerned about the next election. He's concerned about the next commercial. <laughs> and then you have a politician concerned about the next election, and a statesman concerned about the next generation. A yid is supposed to be concerned about halam haba. I mean, you go beyond even this world. It is a long-term attention span, not a short-term attention span. That conflict is immutable and constant and irreducible. And that brings me to the third area of conflict between media values and Jewish values. And again, built right into the media themselves. The nature of mass media, the nature is superficial. It has to be. It's a visual medium. Everything is based on the way you look. Uh, there, there's another interesting movie that's out, and it's pretty good. It's, it has its moments, called Charlie Wilson's War, with Tom Hanks and uh, Julia Roberts. And the point about it is it's about two low lives. She's married to somebody else. He's still officially married to somebody else. He's running around. He's a US congressman. He's a drunk, he uses cocaine, he's in hot tubs with Playboy bunnies, and, and yet they are both deeply <coughs> sympathetic characters. Even though they're having an affair with one another and they're, they're struggling to try to get arms to the Afghan rebels, to the Muj, as they call them, the Mujahideen, it's all based on a true story. He's a Democratic congressman, by the way. <laughs> Take that, Dr. Lukens. Uh, <laughs> Yes, she was a Republican. <laughs> she was a Republican. And an Asia siege situation. <laughs> In any event. So, the point about this movie is why are they sympathetic characters? And I went through the, the movie and you have to ask yourself, why do these people come across, they behave really in a, in a manner that we wouldn't want our children or our neighbors to behave? I mean, really, trust me, you, you wouldn't. Mm -hmm. So why are they sympathetic? Because it's Tom Hanks and Julia Roberts. They are just incredible looking people. Now Tom Hanks, there's just something about him on screen. You see him and you like him. And by the way, when you meet Tom Hanks, it's the same thing. He's a, a very likable guy. Uh, Julia Roberts, it's not that she's the most beautiful woman in the world. She's not. It, it's, it's, there's just something about but it's all visual, all surface. <coughs> it is the opposite value of Sheker Chachem Behevel Hayofi. I mean, what, what I honor my beautiful wife for is not the fact that she's my beautiful wife, but she's a, a, an Isha who Yiras Hashem. And, and she truly is. And that's what we're supposed to look for, beyond the surface. And, and if you, there is no more clear contradiction between media values, which are always superficial, must be, because of the nature of the media, and Jewish values, which call upon us to look beyond. It's the values of the ear versus the values of the eye. Isn't it striking that when HaKadosh Baruch Hu communicates with us on Har Sinai, or whenever he communicates to any of the figures in the Torah, 
He doesn't do a video display. Please pay attention to the screen. <laughs> we're going to be giving you some ten very good rules, which we're going to illustrate in the style of MTV. No, it's not like that. It's not the uh, ten videos. It's not the ten images. We have a series of Dibros, the ten words, the ten stains, the ten commandments. It's, it's a huge difference. And the Shema itself, when we say Shema, as we, we already have with Mari, but, uh, and, and as we do in the morning, when we say Shema, we're not saying, hey, look, look at that. It's listen, hear. And as a matter of fact, the Shema specifically warns us against being misled by our eyes. So this conflict is built right into the nature of media. But that, by the way, and I really mean this, I don't mean this as a joke, you'll take it as a joke, but it's not. It's very serious. One of the reasons that talk radio tends to be more conservative, much more conservative, than any TV, because it's through words. And, and words have an ability to at least approach truth. They have an ability to cut below the surface. It's actually a very good thing you don't see us while we're broadcasting. I mean, given the way that most people on radio tend to dress and, and the, the way that we fidget while we're broadcasting, in my case. But, I, the, but the point is the importance of words, of verbal communication. It's so central to Jewish tradition. Say Torah Shabbat Pat. It's not Torah that you look at or discover with the eyes. You take it through the power of words. So what does all this mean? What does this leave us with? What it leaves us with is the biggest problem with the 29 hours and 17 minutes a week that Americans typically give to television is not the low quality of TV, though God knows it's low quality, even when there's not a writer's strike, it's low quality. Now it's with it. The reality shows, I mean, it's not only is it low quality, it's the high quantity. That's the problem. You know, even if you were if you were watching 29 hours a week of PBS, Fat Chance, <laughs> e e even that would be destructive. I, I one of the reasons, and my wife and I have written about this in, in the book before Right Turns that uh, Diane and I wrote together. One of the reasons we've decided to uh, to have a home without a television is, you know, precisely because life is so short. And the real problem here is the means of communication through the medium. It's the medium itself. It's not the specific messages that some Hollywood elite chooses to send. Now having said that, and sort of bashed Hollywood a little bit, look, the problem is the medium, it's not the people behind the medium. And a lot of people have sometimes terrible things to say about Los Angeles because of the, the world of Hollywood nearby. I've got to tell you, the OU has done a phenomenal job. And Rabbi Kalinsky, and Sandy Kalinsky, and Rabbi Karavkin, and, and all of the people in the OU here in this office. Really, it's an unbelievable thing. Because, you know, it, it used to be a joke. You talk about Los Angeles. I moved back to Los Angeles in 1976. It's a, it's a long time. I, my parents moved here when I was in high school. I was in high school here for two years, then went away to the East Coast, came back in 1976. You can read all about it in the right turns. But the point is, the change in Los Angeles in terms of Jewish content and Jewish values, and the change that, that Rabbi Kalinsky has led with a dynamic, centrist, orthodox presence here in this city, it's phenomenal. We've been gone for 11 years. We moved up to the Northwest, and we, we do love the Northwest. But I will tell you, uh, one of the great achievements of Rabbi Kalinsky and Rabbi Karapin was arranging this beautiful weather <laughs> that we've had the last couple of days. And, and not just the warmth and the sunshine, but the warmth and the sunshine of the Habersha that is so very, very obvious here. It is a beautiful thing.